Good morning, boys and girls. This is the Sunday School lesson for the 23rd of May in 2021. And it is the story about Dagon. Dagon was a fake god. He wasn't the real god. He was the god that the Philistines um, worshipped, and the Philistines were, god, were God's people's enemies. And this god had a temple, but he was made like of stone. How could a god of stone be your creator or who you worshipped? But that's who the Philistines worshipped, and there were five Philistine towns, and they all worshipped Dagon at Dagon's temple. So, what happened is the people were disobeying God. And when the people were disobeying God, God allowed the Philistines to come and attack them. So the Philistines came and attacked them, and God's people went out and fought, and they lost the battle. Because God wasn't helping them, because they were disobeying God. So, God's people said, well, since we lost the battle, let's force God to go with us into battle. So they grabbed the Ark of the Covenant. Now, the Ark of the Covenant was the gold box with the poles that came out of it, with the big angels on the top of it, that sat in the tabernacle. It was the most holy object there. And the, the God, our God, the real God, the God that created the world, the God that sent Jesus to die, he lived in his spirit in a cloud on top of the Ark of the Covenant. So they said, we'll just go get that God box and we'll force God to help us in this battle. So they went and they went into the tabernacle and they took the Ark of the Covenant. Well, Hophni and Phinehas, Eli's two sons, went with the God box because they couldn't leave it go without them. So they went into the battle too. So whenever the Ark of the Covenant came into the camp, all of God's people said, yay, yay battle because the Ark of the Covenant is with us. And the Philistines got quite frightened because they thought they would lose the battle because God was with them. But you can't force God to do anything. So there they were at this battle and they had the Ark of the Covenant with them. They had the two priests, Hophni and Phinehas, with them. But that doesn't force God to help you. And what happened was they lost the battle. 30,000 Israelites died that day. And Hophni died and Phinehas died, just like God had told Samuel was going to happen. And the Ark of the Covenant was stolen. They took it to the Philistine town. Oh, this was bad news. So somebody ran back to tell Eli the priest. Now, Eli the priest was blind he was 98 years old, and he was a big, big, big fat man. And he was sitting on his chair by the temple, and somebody came racing down to tell him what had happened. And they said, oh, it was a bad battle. 30,000 men died. Hophni and Phinehas are dead, and the Ark of the Covenant is stolen. And when they told him that, he fell off his seat, and he died. It was the end. Eli was dead. And the Ark of the Covenant was over in the Philistine town. So let me tell you what happened to the Ark of the Covenant when it was in the Philistine town. Well, it's really what happened to Dagon, the fake god. So they took the Ark of the Covenant into Dagon's temple and set it up beside Dagon. And they went to bed. And in the morning, they came back to see how the Israelite God was getting along with Dagon, and Dagon had fallen off of his pedestal, poop, and he was bowing down to the Ark of the Covenant. I said, oh, this is not good. Put him back up again. Here you go, you fake stone God. You sit right here. You are our God. They came back the next day. Dagon had fallen down on the ground, and his head and his hands had fallen off. All that was left of Dagon was his belly. <laughs> and they said, oh, this is dangerous. Well, you know what's happening too. 
there are rats running all through our city and people are getting big tumors and boils on their skin. I think that God of Israel is attacking our bodies. We have got to get this thing out of our town. So they took the Ark of the Covenant to the next town and they had rats and they had boils and tumors and they said, take it to the next town. And the people in the next town said, no way. We don't want the Ark of the Covenant in our town. Let's get rid of it. How are we going to get rid of it? Oh, I know. I have this plan. Let's take two mama cows that just have had new baby calves and we'll put the new baby calves in a barn and tie them up and then we'll take the mama cows and we'll attach them to a new cart to a new wagon and we'll put the ark of the covenant on the back of the wagon and then we'll see what the mother cows do if the mother cows go back and take care of their babies which is what mother cows should do then we'll know that it really was not God that caused all this trouble. But if those two mama cows go down to Israel territory, then we'll know that God did this. Well, you can't send, you can't send it without some gifts. So they made ten, five gold tumors and five gold rats and put them on the wagon too. And they hitched them up to those new moms they put the babies over in the barn, and the moms wanted to be with the babies. So the moms were saying, boo, 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 the whole way down the road. But they kept on walking towards Israelite territory. And they wanted to go back to the babies, but they had to take the Ark of the Covenant back home. When the Ark of the Covenant got back home again, the people of Israel were rejoicing and all excited that it had come back. And so they had a sacrifice and they worshiped. And then they asked Samuel why they had lost the battle. And Samuel said, you lost the battle because you weren't obeying God. And they said, oh, we have sinned. And they fasted and they prayed and they asked God for help. And God sent a lightning and thunderstorm that went before them into the Israelite camp. And the Israelites ran back home to their real house and left God's people alone. The memory verse is Psalm 68, 1. Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. You say it? Let God arise. Arise, let his enemies be scattered. Dear Dad, dear Daddy God, we thank you, Lord, that you are more powerful than any stone idol or than anything else that we might choose to worship instead. We thank you, Lord, that you are the God of the bright sunshine, that you are the God of the green grass and, and the fun times that we're having this time of year. That you're the God of everything that we have and the air that we breathe and God of us and that you are a real God. You are the only real God. We thank you, O Lord, that your strength is enough for this day. In Jesus' name, amen.